step aside. We have to get away because there's a lot of us in here, right? There's a lot of our sinful flesh that gets in the way. And Jesus needs some space. Just like they needed space at the inn when Jesus was born and nobody had room for him. And Joseph was knocking on doors and everybody said, no vacancy, no vacancy. Somebody needs to open up the door and let Jesus have some room to stay. You want Jesus to stay a while, right? You want to take him home with you after you leave this retreat. But in order to make more room for the Lord, you've got to die to the old man. You've got to let the old man die in order to make more room for Christ. The old man has to die before there can be a resurrection. There must be a death, a funeral, before there can be new life. Amen? Amen. And so, um, as we get started today, I just want to pray. If you could just bow your heads. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this retreat. We thank you for you've been shaping us and molding us as a perfect potter, Lord. That you have a perfect plan for each of our lives. And you know the end result. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You see the end from the beginning, Lord God. Lord, I just thank you for what you've done in this place thus far, Lord. And we ask for your spirit, Lord God, to continue to move in this place as we sense your spirit, as we have an attitude of expectancy, for that is the birthplace of miracles, Lord, when there is expectancy, when there is faith in the air, Lord God. We are not ready just to pack up and leave yet, Father God. Continue to share a word with us, my God, that you would bring us to completion of all that you wanted to put into us this weekend, my God. As we set aside this weekend, God, we ask that you would continue to speak today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I shared briefly uh, last night about a guy that I had worked with that came to Christ. And I want to share a little bit about that. His name was Saul. And I used to work in, in, a, in Chicago on a place on North and Pulaski, if you're from Chicago. And it was a social service agency that I worked at. And um, there was a guy named Saul there. We weren't the best of friends or anything, but, you know, we were co-workers and we knew each other. And then um, he knew I was a Christian, but he never asked any questions and he didn't seem like he was too interested, you know. So then after time went by, he went his way and I went my way. I went on to another job. He went on to another job. We didn't see each other. And then about seven, eight years later, this is in the uh, mid-90s. Seven or eight years later, I bump into a guy named Jose. And Jose also used to work with me at this location. And Jose was um, telling me that he just came to Christ, that he was a born-again Christian. So we're celebrating. We're like, man, that's awesome, man. You're a Christian now. We're talking and stuff. And then um, he goes, you remember Saul? I said, yeah. He goes, he owns a restaurant in Pilsen on Ashland and 18th Street. So we should go by there and visit him. So I go, okay. So we went over there. And he's the owner, so he hooks us up with some nice plates of food, of course. <laughs> he gives us the best table in the restaurant. And this is like a gourmet Mexican restaurant. And we're eating like, um, you know, chicken breast with uh, sautéed onions and bananas, grilled uh, bananas, you know. And it was just a feast, you know. We're just sitting there talking, drinking fruit drinks and having a great time, you know, talking about old times. And we're just sharing about our faith. And Saul's listening. Well, we left after this. I didn't think anything of it. And then Jose calls me the next day. And he said, you remember um, last night um, we were talking and Saul called me today and he wants to hear more about God. He's, he's interested. He wants to hear some more. So I go, cool, man. This is like a Christian's dream come true, you know. <laughs> so uh, so we, we, we went over there the next night and we went this time to the second floor of his apartment. We went right up to the second floor and he lived above it was a two flat and he lived on the second floor of the restaurant and so we get in there and the place is a pigsty there's clothes everywhere there's dirty clothes piled up and there's there's newspapers there's uh, stacks of dirty dishes in the sink and everything's in disarray and you know I'm like sitting on the side of a couch you know somebody sitting on a coffee table and, and we're trying to have a conversation, and he's like already distraught. His face is like ready to cry already. And he's like, man, I, I, I'm not feeling right, man. I, he goes, I, I, I may look like I got it all together, and I got this restaurant, and I'm making money, but 
I'm, I'm, I'm empty inside. I'm, 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 I'm feeling empty and sad. And man, I, I want what you guys have. And I want, I want that peace. I don't have peace in my life. I don't have any joy. And I need that. I want to receive Christ. So I'm like, what? Are you serious? And he's like, yeah. So we pray right there in his living room. And the Holy Spirit came, you know, when you feel the presence of God, like in, a, in even a more powerful way where it's just like, we were just all crying, man, and just he just surrendered all to the Lord. And we were hugging and high-fiving, and it was a great celebration, you know. All the angels in heaven celebrate when one person comes to Christ. Because it's tough to come to Christ. There's a lot of unbelief and a lot of things that keep you. Because there's always that step of faith that's, that's necessary. You're always going to have to take a step of faith. Nothing is going to be totally written and explained out verbatim that, there's not, that, that, that there is not a um, possibility of error. Where you're like, man, possibly I'm making a wrong mistake here. I'm making a decision that is wrong. But you have to go on what the Lord is saying to you and take that step of faith. And then as you do, it opens up the door and you see that you made the right decision. But the flesh will keep you from making that decision, right? It will try to keep you back because the devil don't want nobody to get saved. That's why he hates the gospel. He hates the preaching of the word because the, the preaching of the word is what lifts people to have faith. Faith cometh from hearing and hearing from the word of God. So I wish I could end this on a happy note, a happy story, happily ever after. Saul is doing great. But the fact is, he never followed through with anything. He was supposed to hook up with Jose on a regular basis. He was supposed to go to church with Jose. And um, he was supposed to stay in touch with us. But, you know, he never made it. He never followed through. He, did, he didn't return phone calls. He was ducking and avoiding us. About a couple weeks later, I went by the restaurant, and he was like, oh, hey, what are you doing? Like, I, like, like nothing happened in his, in his uh, living room that day. I'm like, what is this? What happened? <laughs> so I asked myself, I don't know if you've ever seen something like this. What happened that day in his living room? What took place that day when he gave his life to Christ? I don't understand what happened. And there's a verse that, that helps us understand this. In, in Luke chapter 17, if you could turn there with me. Luke 17. I'm going to read verses 11 through 16. 19, I'm sorry. I'm going to need glasses pretty soon. And say amen when you get there. Luke 17. Amen. amen. Did you bring a Bible to a retreat? Everybody brought a Bible? No. All right, it says like this. I'm reading from the NIV version. Luke 17, verse 11 to 19. It says like this. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at the feet of Jesus and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Ask your neighbor, where are the other nine? Where are the other nine? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return to give praise to God? Jesus is speaking of himself here, and he's calling himself God. Was no one here willing to come back and give praise to God except this foreigner, this Samaritan? Then he said to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. And this little caption, this little story has always gotten my attention. I don't know about you, but I've always looked at that and said, why did only one dude come back? Why, why did all nine of them take off? Why did only one guy have the decency to say thank you and come back? I don't understand that.